old story of boy meets girl. Well... Boy becomes a crazy cult leader and tells his loony followers to commit murder, goes to prison, waits for 36 years, girl who is 53 years younger than him decides that he's got some good ideas about the environment of all things, moves to be near him, girl then nearly marries him but doesn't because of possible nefarious reasons, and then it doesn't happen because boy kicks the bucket because he's 83. It's like if Romeo and Juliet were both psychopaths except one is an evil geriatric hipster. You know, that old romantic story. Star, birth name Afton Elaine Burton, made the colossally weird decision at the age of 17 to fall in love with Charles Manson. Yes, THE Charles Manson that, you know, Helter Skelter, you know, all the crazy cult followers, yeah, THE Charles Manson. Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like wolves are about to write Frannis? Which is a totally sane thing to do if you, if you think about it. Reasoning behind why she started to fall in love with Charles Manson is almost as colossally weird as the act of falling in love with him to start with. According to her, she first encountered Charles Manson and his environmental ideas, which are called ATWA. ATWA stands for Air, Trees, Water and Animals. And if you're a fan of System of a Down like I am, then you're going to be just as disappointed to find out that they've got a song called that. Now, of course, being 17, she obviously thought she knew absolutely everything that she wanted and she knew everything she needed to know about life at the time. So she upped and moved over to Corcoran, California, which is where Charles Manson is currently housed. This was so that she could have better access to the visitation rooms and to be able to talk with him on the phone every day, which she could have done at her home in Illinois. But no, no, she, she has to see the guy that looks like Nazi father time. Love was in the air in the visitation room between Starr and Charles Manson up until 2014 when they applied for a marriage license. And there it sat, not being signed. Hmm, weird. I mean, I'm not so sure that a serial killer who is older than the Hindenburg has many potential romantic interests willing to relocate to an entirely new state for him, but you know, Sometimes you get cold feet. Obviously that endless supply of Gillette products and Chucky Wockies is really sweetening the deal. Over the course of the entirety of 2014, Manson didn't sign the license. It was available, it was there for him, just, just never signed it. I mean, if he was hoping to bolt at the altar, it's kind of tough to do that when you're wearing leg irons. That's so what was it that really was stopping Manson from becoming Mr. Star? It's conspiracy time, detectives. According to tabloid journalist Daniel Simone, in 2011 he received a letter from Manson's cellmate saying that he overheard a story being told between Star and her boyfriend at the time, saying that they wanted to have his corpse. It was said that their goal all along was to marry Star to Charles Manson so that she would have the legal rights over his corpse after he died. And they wanted to make him into a waxwork corpse like Lenin, parade him around and take him across the country to anybody willing to pay money to see him. And this, everybody, is possibly the world's worst idea for a sequel to Death Stranding. I know when this first came out, there was a huge, like, kerfuffle about it, about, oh my God, Manson's gonna get married, X, Y, and Z. And then, oh no, actually he's not, because because Star is, wants to steal his body and then basically make him into a weird human puppet and take him around. Oh God, and there was a big, huge thing about it. But, newsflash. This is literally a single source. One guy. One single dude said that he overheard this conversation taking place. There is no other information about this. This, is, this isn't this is even a primary source. Is it like a tertiary qu quarterly source? Whatever source it is, it's pretty far away from how we can verify that it's true. So make, make of that what you will. What else was... Daniel Simone writing at the time. Well, God, it just so happens he was writing an entire book which he wanted to sell about Charles Manson called The Retrial of Charles Manson. Classy. Tabloid, 
tabloid newsletters, tabloid journalists. So classy. The book he wrote is actually, uh, it does cover this nefarious plot in detail, but it also covers what he describes as inconsistencies in the 70s trial. Now, I'm not entirely sure what's inconsistent about the fact that he very definitively told his followers to go and murder a pregnant woman, but journalists gonna journalist, I guess. Star herself has spoken out against this and very much defends herself on this. She's quoted as saying, this is tabloid crap. It's totally false and totally ridiculous. It's bad enough that all this is being publicized, but to have something so outrageously stupid as that is pretty upsetting. I don't think I would be the first to say that falling in love with Charles Manson also comes under the outrageously stupid umbrella, just so you know. She denies the plot either way. Adding credence to this, though, is the fact that Star's family have really come out in support of her and said that they absolutely do believe that Star is fully in love with, with Charles Manson, of all people. They did specify that they're not particularly happy with the fact that she's in love with Charles Manson, of all people. Uh, but, you know, if, if she wants to marry him, then they're perfectly happy to help facilitate that. I mean, it's a bit late now. The thought was there. They obviously took a leaf out of the parenting book that the parents from Abducted in Plain Sight also did. So, why was it that Manson didn't sign that marriage license? I personally have three prevailing theories. Now, the first one is, is the conspiracy theory to do with the corpse plot. Manson let it expire because he became aware of it through listening to his cellmate, who was the one who supposedly heard star and her boyfriend talking about it so he heard about it he got told about it and he thought hang on a minute this gillette is too good to let go i've got to keep her on the hook so he kept her on the hook and that's and that's why he let it expire the second theory introduces another conspiracy because there has to be more than one conspiracy when it comes to something to do with charles manson doesn't there it is thought that the guards at the prison where charles manson was serving purposefully put him into solitary confinement. Bruh. They did this so that Manson would be unable to sign anything, unable to talk to Star on the phone, and unable to see her in person, thereby creating a rift in their perfect union. There's a few things wrong with that though. How did they know about the nefarious plot, seeing it was one guy who apparently heard it, and he wrote a letter to somebody that's not the guards? How why would they care? Who cares? It's Charles Manson, he's a crazy man. And theory three is the one that is the most boring and most likely to have happened. The magical corpse plot isn't real and Manson didn't become aware of it. He just did, doesn't like marriage for, who cares? Who cares what a serial killer really thinks about marriage? I mean, we might as well just put it down to that he doesn't like dresses or pianos or signing paper. There is one little tidbit that comes out of this entire experience, though, that I think we can all feel relieved about at the end of the day. Lifers are not entitled to conjugal visits at all while they're serving their term. Star blueballed Charles Manson to death. That's some sweet, juicy, blue plum justice. If anyone deserves to be blue to death, it's definitely Manson. Just saying. What do you think about Star? Do you think... I mean, I've got to be honest. I've got to, I've got to say on this. Of all the people... Who, who in their 17... Like, I had some really embarrassing crushes when I was 17. I had this huge crush on Darren Malakian from System of Down. And you go and have a look at that guy. Yeah, you just go Google him now and look him up. And, like, type in 1999 or something like that when he looks like a troll doll. Just... And for some reason, I had eyes for him. So, I, I don't know. He did, At least he didn't kill people. I mean, that's like looking at... Charles Manson going, oh, lovely idea. He seems nice. He he likes animals. He likes animals, but he really hates human beings. And it's so unfortunate, Star, that you happen to be a human being. So you picked pretty bad. We thought Katie, Katie Holmes picked poorly when she went, Tom Cruise seems like a sane man. 
I should marry that man. Everyone was like, no, Katie, no. Just back away from the Scientologist. No, this is somehow definitely worse than that. Whatever you think about what happened with Star, was the corpse plot real? I mean, it was very unlikely to be real, considering it came from a tabloid journalist who has about as much integrity as Joe Biden does currently. Bruh. Once again, thank you for watching, and if you did like this content, please like and subscribe. I always like feedback down in the comments as well, because it's going to be rubbish unless I get feedback. So, you know, give me some feedback. Good, bad, I'll listen to it. Doesn't matter what it is. Just... Whatever you do, don't fall in love with Charles Manson. Not that you can because he's dead, but if you can, then you're very weird because you're falling in love with a dead killer. And Star, if you're out there, just stay away. Stay away from prisons. Stay away from pen pals in prison. Stay away from writing to serial killers. Don't do any of these things. You can... It's okay. You're free now. Keep safe in the isolation, fellow sickos, and I will see you the next time, next week. Don't fall in love with serial killers. Bye.